talking to you. Not just on Sunday mornings, but he's talking to you every day. Sometimes you can read your scriptural devotions at home. I hope that you have a few minutes set aside every day to read the Bible, either with your kids or your spouse or even yourself. And you can read the words without listening to what he's saying. It's so easy to do that. That's why I always recommend when you're going to read the scriptures, begin by saying, God, would you talk to me as I read your word today? Because one of the, one of the challenges that, that Christ's followers faced um, was actually that Christ's closest followers, the disciples, didn't hear everything Christ said because they didn't want to listen to everything. Yes, they were excited to hang out with him. That's a great thing, but they, 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 they well, let's continue on here. Verse 8. Then they remembered his words. And it's like, Oh my. The women get it. The light bulb goes on. The car starts. Whatever analogy you want to make, it's like the heart goes up in their throats. And they drop everything, spice and oil, all over the place. And they race back to town to find the other Jesus followers, who, by the way, are all huddled together because they have a problem. The Romans have taken out their leader, and they're wondering if they're safe. They're, they're, they're not wondering when their leader's going to arise from the dead. They're wondering if they're going to die, just like their leader. And when the women come back from the tomb, they, they told all these things to the eleven and to the others. They explain everything, and this is what we hear. It was uh, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. Now, gang, if you want to make up a good story, right, a, a believable story, um, and you, you want to make the disciples look good, right? Because these are the closest followers of Jesus. So these are the guys you want to make look good. They're, they're guys that huge churches would be named on. These are the rock stars of the faith. So when the girls come back to the disciples, their faithful, rock solid response is this. But they did not believe the women. And why not? Why didn't they believe the women? Well, it wasn't because they were women. They didn't believe the women because they were expecting Jesus to rise from the dead. They were not. No one expected it. It wasn't even a thought. We saw him beaten. We saw him hanged. We watched the light ooze out of his body. And now you women are telling me what? <laughs> I think maybe you inhaled a little too much of those spices. Oh, men of faith here, heroes do not apply. Verse 12. Even with an empty tomb in front of them, with the linen clock lying in such a way that it made no sense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away. And there's that word again, wondering to himself what had happened. There's that word, wonder. The empty tomb's there, the linen clock is lying. It would have made no sense if somebody had stolen the body. The Bible says he went away wondering, what, what happened? What if somebody stole my friend Jesus? What if... What if my friend Jesus really rose from the dead? 
Because if Jesus really, if he really rose from the dead, this changes everything. If he rose from the dead, everything he said about himself is true. If he rose from the dead, everything he said about God was true. If he rose from the dead, everything he said about his own life, death, and future was true. Everything he said about me being able to talk to God as my father was true. Everything he said about when I pray in private, God hears my prayers in private and will reward me openly is true. If Jesus rose from the dead, then what he said about his death being the payment for the sins of the whole world was true. If Jesus rose from the dead, then he is the Son of God, and this changes everything. And we learn later in the Bible that as Peter wanders back, he concluded the body had not been stolen, this was the right tomb, and that Jesus had risen from the dead. And later we learn that Peter saw and talked with the risen Jesus. The very same Peter who had wandered, who was so convinced that Jesus had risen from the dead that just a few weeks later in Jerusalem, he takes place in, in an event that brings everyone up from work, everyone out of the restaurants, everyone out of the shops, everyone out of school. Over 3,000 people come out into the streets of Jerusalem because of this event. You can read all about it in Acts chapter 2. But everyone in Jerusalem is asking what happened. And at that moment, the same formerly wondering Peter who had no expectation of a resurrection but who was hiding back in Jerusalem at home during the weekend of Christ's death. The same guy steps up a few weeks later and says to thousands, listen up, I'm going to tell you what happened. And in Acts chapter 2, here's Peter's conclusion from peering into an empty tomb. This comes from Peter peering into an empty tomb. This is what he shares with the people in the streets of Jerusalem in Acts chapter 2, verse 22. People of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. In other words, guys, you remember Jesus. Don't tell me you don't. Okay? You saw him. You saw the miracles. You like the miracles. You know what I'm talking about. He was sent by God. And you handed him over knowing this to wicked men who put him to death on the cross. Now he's talking to men and women who lived around Jerusalem, people who had been able to see the crucifixion take place. These are some of the people who would have gathered on the hill for the feeding of the 5,000. These are the people who would have heard the Sermon on the Mount. These people knew Jesus, his followers, his family. Peter stands up and says, everybody, you handed a man you knew to be from God over the Romans to be murdered. But look at this. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. When I looked in that empty tomb, I became convinced. In fact, I'll stake my life on it. Knowing you might crucify me like, like you did him. I am absolutely sure that this Jesus you crucified has come back to life, has risen from the dead, is one sent from God. It gets better. 
God has raised this Jesus to life and we are all witnesses of the fact. We don't believe it because we believe it. We believe it because we saw it. We weren't tricked into this. We saw it with our own eyes. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. Uh, in, in this culture, what, what he's about to say is equivalent to blasphemy, and he should be strung up to die. This is so over the top that Peter's either crazy, wants to commit suicide by crowd, or he's absolutely positive that it's the truth. Be assured of this. God has made...